welcome to the Understanding Project Management Discussions podcast. This is Dave Barrett. My discussion today is with David Blake Dixon. David is a graduate of the Bachelor of Public Relations program and has since worked at a number of agencies delivering projects to clients. We discussed a number of topics, including the challenges of managing projects in an agency environment, tips for working with clients and teams, and managing time zone differences while working remotely. David is also an avid cyclist, and we did compare project management to cycling in a few instances. Here is my discussion with David Blake Dixon. Hi, David. Uh, how are you doing? Pretty good. How are you? Good, good, good to see you again after after a number of years. So it's it's good to see you. So uh, so our topic today is um, is, is uh, you work in a in an agency setting. Uh, in my understanding, and you can you can you know you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I if I but I think you're you're involved in in managing a number of client projects. I, I think at any one time, I, I believe that's your your type of role. So so overall, the the topic is are just centered around. Uh, managing projects in this sort of agency setting with multiple projects on the go. So, so I guess, uh, um, I guess just to kick us off is, is could you just sort of, you know, give, give it a, a you know, just a, a uh, an overview of your sort of your average day or, or what you sort of do, you know, day to day. Yeah. So, um, I've been working in agencies, I guess, for, uh, three and a half, almost four years now. Um, and my, my current company I'm with, uh, we do email marketing um, and I am a, a technical resource, I guess is the easiest way of saying what I do. Um, so I, I don't know how big my portfolio of clients is because I'm just getting switched around between a couple, but I think I have about four, maybe five that I might be involved with um, on any given week. Some of those have daily tasks and some of those have you know, semi-monthly tasks. Um, so I work with the, uh, the client services team. They hand off projects to me and say, uh, Hey, we need to get this done. And, uh, I try and get it done within their time frame. Great. So are you, a, are you a technical, like, do you, um, do you, you coordinate tasks? Not, not, when I say only, I don't mean as to minimize, but is, are you are you coordinating things or are you also a doer on, on some things? Like, are, do you sign things to yourself? I'm mainly a doer. Um, okay. So uh, I try and coordinate things. You know, I'm involved in handoffs to other teams um, and involved in kind of some, through our uh, QA process, there'll be, certain times where it's kind of three, four of our teams working directly together, handing things back and forth. And at that point, I kind of become a little bit more um, coordination rather than doing. Um, but I would say if I had to kind of put a percentage as to doing versus coordinating, I'm probably 75% doing and 25% coordinating. So um, I just want to take, take us back to uh, a number of years ago. Um, you know, you were, you were, uh, you know, in, in a, a couple of my classes, uh, many, many or a few years ago anyways. And, <laughs> and, uh, uh, we talked about this just before we started. So, uh, but I'll, but I'll just go through it again, where, um, in, in the first, the first class, which is, uh, uh, fairly early in, in, in your, in your program, um, you know, my perception was, and this is very common in, in teaching project management, I run into this a lot where, you know, the, the, the feedback that I get, not overtly, but you can see it in, in, in the student's eyes, which is, okay, you know, Dave, I hear what you're saying, um, but I'm not really sure I need this. Like, you know, I'll, 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 I'll write the tests and I'll, I'll, I'll fill out the forms that you want me to and so on. But, but, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not really, I'm, I'm not sure I really buy into this stuff. So, and, and it's, it's, it's relatively, that's one of the major challenges I have is, is, is trying to, trying to convince that, you know, you're going to need this, you know, but, 
then flash forward a couple of years is there, you know, there's sort of a, a you know, a, an intro and then advanced class of, of project management in, in that was in your program. I just noticed this, this huge difference, you know, and it, it, it was, it was after a couple, at least a couple of co-ops, we weren't sure if it was two or three co-ops, but a couple of co-ops, uh, uh, you know, in, in real life projects and, and, you know, suddenly that look was different, you know, that was, I get it. And as I remember, you were doing fantastic. We were using MS Project as a learning tool. Not that I'll, that's one of my questions that I'll have later is with what kind of scheduling or workflow tools do you use? Um, but we were teaching with MS Project and you were you were building quite into, I, I still remember you like some some really good and insightful so uh, schedules. And I remember thinking, wow, that, that was a that was a transition. You know, and it wasn't of my doing necessarily. It was, it was real life experience. So, you know, I just wanted to confirm. You know, how did how does that how was that from your angle? Is that how, how was that journey for you? I I'd, I'd say you hit it pretty pretty right on there. I uh, you know, second year was like, okay, yeah, this is a mandatory course. I'll show up to it. I'll do my work. Um, but I naively kind of thought like, well we're all going to be working towards the same goal once we get out and we're working in an organization. So why wouldn't we just basically have a checklist and you get stuff done and stuff gets done. Um, and then fast forward, I survived through two, maybe three co-ops. We're not quite sure, but either way, I by then seen in both uh, at least one small and one large organization, what, project management meant and what, uh, especially the one project, what it could be when you have multiple stakeholders that have very, very different priorities than you. And, but you still need to get your work done and you still need to hit this end goal. So it really hit home that, okay, you know, project management, it might not be MS project. It might not even be a sticky note on the side of your desk and your task list, but it is something that if you want to be successful, you kind of need to do it in all aspects of your life. Um, we were joking before we got on here, of, you know, you could even, I'm big into biking, I'm a bit of big into mountain biking. You can put project management uh, theories and that sort of thing towards biking and, uh, and look at it like that of, okay, well, I'm going for a ride tomorrow morning. What do I need to get done before that? What are the risks on the ride? All of that. And I think um, I, I said this before as well, the, the courses that I was maybe the most lukewarm towards uh, during school have become the ones that have stuck with me the most and have been the most helpful for me over the course of my career so far. Um, so not to sound too much like, you know, school is good and stay in school kids, <laughs> but like... <laughs> It's, well, it does matter, I promise. <laughs> I, I've, I've often, I've often said to 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 uh, to my current students, and and again, I'm I'm my my challenge is, and this is not, I'm not trying to do a woe with me thing on this, by the way, uh, but my challenge is, is that you know, I'm talking about something that you're going to experience in the future. You know, for, for many students, I'm it's like I'm talking about um, a, a country that you've never been to. And I'm describing it and saying how it is, but the students are not in that country. They're, they're, they're not there. So, but what I do say is that, you know, I, I guarantee you in for most of, of you in five years from now, you're going to look back and say, all right, he was saying a few things that were true, you know, okay, I'll give them that, that eventually <laughs> it, it sort of catches up. So, so that's, that, that's good. One of the things that we said, when we were talking about this a little bit before we were talking about, you, we were talking about process and you, and you were, you were talking about, you know, sort of one of the things with project management is that there's, there's, you know, it teaches you some process, but not, you know, there, there's a, I can't remember the expression you use, but a certain amount of it, do you, uh, how do you, how do you see the sort of use of the tools within, within your current role, within the agency setting, the, you know, uh, project management is a set of processes, basically. How does that, how does that square with what you do? 
So we have like a pretty standard um, workflow that the, the nice thing is as a specialized agency like we are, we use a pretty standard workflow across all projects. So you can expect the same sort of check-ins along the way, um, no matter what client you're with, which is nice. Um, the thing is you can work as best you can with clients. And actually this is our, uh, our CEO has a, a great analogy he uses with clients of um, he shows uh, two F1 pit stop videos. He shows um, the Ferrari like world record one where it's, it's less than 15 seconds or something like that. And then he shows one where the driver doesn't stop at the right place. And so everyone on the team has to run and meet the car another 10 meters down the road. And his analogy is, you know, for us to do the best work together, we're your, we're your pit crew, but you need to stop the car in this square so that we can get the work done. Um, and so the reality is you can, you can have those conversations with clients, you can cajole them, you can, you can have them as happy as possible and as willing to work within that as possible um, and working with your safe 45 day timeline that you set out with them. The reality is they also have bosses they also have other priorities and they have things that will come up last minute. Um, not to date this podcast too much, but we're still in COVID and, you know, with COVID has come a lot of uh, emergency emails and emergency communications that need to go out and you can't turn around and say, okay, well, I know you want to get this exposure notice out, but uh, you have a 45 day turnaround. So, so we got to stick to the process, sorry. Um, you need to have that flexibility to when an emergency happens, when a competing priority comes down the pipeline that, you know, maybe their CEO has said, this is the utmost priority. And they're just, they're at the same level as you just at their company. You need to be able to be flexible and say, okay, let's work on this. You know, maybe we can't get it out tonight, but we can get it out first thing tomorrow. And um, I think our team is very good at, finding that balance of, um, you know, we have the plan and we ideally stick to the plan, but if the wheels fall off, we have a way to fix it. And we have people that are willing to make it work. Um, I think yeah, at the end of the day, you're there to get a job done. And uh, I would rather a job that gets done than a job and is like 95% perfect than a job that is 100% perfect, but 10 days late. Right. Or dissatisfied customer on all that. So I agree with you. The, the real challenge is to understand that balance. Like if it, that is like the, in my mind, it's like the higher level. It's, it's like when the, the, the sort of the realization that you come to at some point, hopefully, if you, is that you can say, you know, well, there is this process, we have a 45 day cycle, or we have these phases, whatever, different organizations have different structures of, of work. And, and, and it's good. It's there for a reason. It's like, you know, saying the, the, the pit stop is that, you know, the, normally the car stops here and everybody, your job is to put the wheel on and your job is to do this and all that. And so it's a, it's a, it's a finely tuned process, which is good, but understand the, the, the sort of the higher level thinking is if you understand what to do when something else goes wrong, or if, the client wants something else or, or the client or the, the client does stop three feet past, you know, what, what do you do? You can't just say, well, we're out. We're, we're not finishing the race. You know, that's it. You, you, you got to react. And then that un understanding the balance, if you can balance process and sort of spontaneity or agility or whatever we want to call it, if you can balance those two and not let one dominate, like, you know, the, if the if the process dominates you, you get rigidity and you get you know like you said you'll get dissatisfied customers if you let you know if 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 too much if there's no pro no like no no structure it's it's chaos like it's, you know it's you know it's just uh, uh, every day is a is a is a you know a, a just a, a you know ton of work and who knows what's going to happen 
So. Yeah, and I've I've worked places that you know they were smaller, and we didn't necessarily have processes ironed out, and there was a lot of flying by the seat of our pants. But that just meant that every day was firefighting. It was you walk in and you think this is the fire you're putting out, but then another fire that you forgot about is still burning. So you're just jumping around. Whereas at least if you have that plan, sure, you might need to drop something if an emergency happens. But if you have that plan, you have something you can reference back to. Even, even if your timelines are way off and you're not, you're not hitting your timelines at all, you're rushing through them, you still have those checkpoints to go through. If you're just making it up as you go, you are lost. Oh, I know. I, I've often said this to, to, to my classes that, you know, I, I, no, no, plan, no plan is perfect. I'd rather, like, I'd rather have you have an inaccurate plan than nothing, you know, because nothing is just, you're, you're just blowing in the wind. So um, yeah. I just wanted to go back to a minute to your, to your cycling uh, metaphor, you know, because um, it's, it's actually one that I have used. I'm not a cyclist. I, 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 I have a, I have a bicycle, but I'm not a cyclist in the, in the, in the real sense of the word, but I was trying to describe one of the concepts and I, I actually used this for a couple of years. Not, I don't think in, I don't think in, I don't know, I don't think it was in your class, David, because you, you might've looked at me funny and said, no, come on, stop. <laughs> Cause you are, a, you just, you, you are, you are a, a pretty serious cyclist. Um, and but what I was describing is one of the key concepts of project management is, is breaking. If you have a big task, you break it down into smaller, just smaller things, like break it into little segments or deliverables. Um, you know, uh, so I was describing the whole work breakdown structure concept. And it's, it's, a, it's a surprisingly difficult concept to teach sometimes. It's sort of like, again, it's, it's very kind of, uh, you know, for someone who hasn't hasn't worked in projects there's sort of a there's sort of a sometimes a confusion of why are you telling me this you know sort of thing so what i was sort of i show I, what i would do is, is say okay i'm biking to work and i'd show a picture of a big hill and, I, and actually i've done this when i'm cycling out of like is where i've kind of gone if i just look at the top of the hill man it's demotivating like i'm like you know cycling and getting tired and i'm not moving it seems like i'm not moving like the hill's still up there. So <laughs> what I've shown is, is, okay, I just divided the picture up and into 10 segments, you know, 10 little, and it's something where I've cycled, where I've said, okay, I'm just going to ride to that, to that uh, lamppost and I'll ride to that. And then I'll look to the, I mean, I'm just going to ride to that mailbox and then I'll ride to that. And by the time you know it, I'm at the top of the hill, you know, which is, which is a, a an example of work breakdown structure. I mean, as a cyclist, have you, do you, do you run into that or is there, is that a good technique? And, and how do you think of that in terms of project management? Yeah, I think that uh, it applies to just about anything in life, really. Like if you have a really messy house you need to clean um, and you just think about how many loads of laundry you need to do and how you need to unload the dishwasher and all that, it's really daunting if you just break it down into, okay, do load of laundry number one. And if you break that down even further, it helps. Um, I've definitely run into that with cycling too. Um, you know, up here we've got lots of mountain passes to ride through and all that, and they're big hills. So if you just think about, I need to climb a thousand meters on the course of this bike ride, it's gonna be pretty brutal. But if you think about, okay, I just need to get to this hill and then there's a bit of a downhill after that so I can rest. And then it's flat and then it goes uphill again. If you break it into those little chunks, it helps you um, not only mentally manage the day, but physically manage the day. And I think in project management, it's the same thing. If you come to someone and you just say, you know, uh, you're going to send a, a promotional email next week about these new shoes that we just developed. It's pretty daunting because you have to do everything. But if you take that, and I'm lucky enough that I work in a larger agency setting, so I don't have to do every single piece along the way, but if you take that and you break it down into, okay, well, first we need to talk to our client and see what they actually wanna talk about, about the shoes. Is it the fact that they're waterproof, the fact that they're breathable, whatever it is. And then we need to pass that off to the copywriter. And then the graphic designer needs to work on it. And here are all the steps. 
before you know it, you are testing the email and you're ready to get it out the door. Not only does that help you break it down and help it make it seem like not this Everest you need to climb, it also um, it helps you reflect as you're working and any challenges you have along the way, let's say, um, you know, copywriter writes amazing copy about how waterproof these shoes are, but then the graphic designer isn't able to get the pictures you want of the shoes submerged in water. Um, can you tell I've been shopping for new shoes recently? Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if the graphic designer doesn't have what they need, you can reflect back to the step before and go, okay, well, what, where did we go wrong here? Maybe. Right. Um, instead of, you know, what, uh, what I was guilty of before project management and like going through school of, you need to write this essay and just sitting down and writing the essay and it was good enough that I passed and I, you know, didn't learn my lesson, but if I had sat down and pulled my quotes and done all of those little steps, I probably would have had a better end result because I would have had focused times of work um, that you're doing each little piece instead of trying to write the whole essay or trying to develop an entire email. If you're coding the email and writing the copy and trying to design the email all at the same time, you're wasting your time because your brain is bouncing around. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, I've, I've often I've often said, you know, because there, there's another sort of path that sometimes people go through down, which is, you know what, I'll, I'll just pull the all-nighter. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just hit the home run. I'll muscle through it. I'll just do it by the sheer will because it's always been successful for me. That's the way I've done my essays. That's, I, I got that math, you know, exam. I did well on it because I did that. And it, it's it the the problem is is that eventually you hit the wall with the size like it, it, your brain can only hold so much and eventually you'll hit a project where you can't do that you 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 will you, like you say you'll be multitasking too much you've got too much to do not enough time and it and it will it, it's it's a it's a wall that that you'll hit um Another question I have is, is, is what would you, to someone who is, who is coming into an agent, an agency type role in a type of role that, that you're in, what would be your advice to them? Like if you could, you know, you, you would say to them, what, what, what should, what would be your main sort of points to them? Oh, it's <laughs> one or two, not necessarily the best. Yeah. Yeah. I think like, first I'll just touch on kind of what you said about like the, the all nighter and that sort of thing, because that was me, that is 100% me. Yeah. But, uh, again, it's a, it's a thing that people are talking about in work right now is burnout and all of that. And I learned very early on in my career that if you keep trying to just muscle through and knuckle down and put your head through the wall to get it done you're going to eventually burn out and that's not going to be good for anyone involved. Um, not, not to be too drastic about it, but it's not going to be good for you. It's not going to be good for your employer. It's not going to be good for anyone. So right. if you can break it down, it helps. Right. Because um, just to, just to, just to jump in for a sec, because when your head goes through that wall, the surprise is there's another wall. <laughs> yeah. You're going to see. <laughs> Yeah, and in school, it's easy because you have this list of walls that you need to get your head through to graduate or to get through the course. Um, and you kind of just think about it like, okay, well, it's it's only another six weeks. I just need to knuckle down and get these, and these next five assignments done, and then we're done. But the reality is, is there's always the next year of school, or there's always the next project at work, or the next company you work for. It's not even necessarily, oh, well, I just need to get my head down and get a new job after this. It's, there's always a wall. Um, so if you can focus on using the right tools and maybe using a hammer to chip through the wall, it will help you in the long run. Right. Um, I think that's, that's probably my first, uh, my first re recommendation for anyone going into an agency setting is there is a high pressure to um get everything done as fast as possible make all the clients as happy as possible 
And you'll feel like that means that you need to abandon your plan and you're supposed to have three days to work on something, but you got it done on day one. So you're just going to give it back to the client. If you can avoid it, don't break your timelines. If you told the client you're going to get it to them on the 18th and you got it finished on the 15th, awesome. Take a breather, work on something else, look at it on the 17th. Are you still happy with it? Maybe you send it end of day on the 17th. So it's a little bit early. It's a nice little present for them. But if you set that expectation too early on that you can get things done in a one day turnaround instead of a three day turnaround, you're never going to be able to walk that back. It's a lot easier to set long deadlines and then break the rule occasionally rather than set the short deadlines and try and re-educate someone as to what the deadline should be. Right. Um, That's probably the the biggest one for me. So using the cycling analogy again, um, so in other words, every once in a while you need to draft a little bit. Like you need to, if if you're out front pushing, and again, I... I, I speak of this as if I've ever done it, but <laughs> but from what I've seen on TV and in a video is that if you're out front, just giving it continuously, you'll, you'll, you'll burn out. You, it's a long race, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, to, to take the, the Tour de France metaphor and, and use it, um, rely on your team. Like it's not for the most part, if you have a team around you, if you're lucky mm-hmm. enough, It's not a solo effort. You don't need to do all 200 kilometers by yourself off the front. If you have a team that can help you out and can, if you're off the front and they can bring you water, cool. If they can go in front of you to break the wind for you, cool. But don't feel like you need to be the hero um, and get everything done and put it all on your back. Yes, you will have teammates no matter where you are in life that aren't necessarily your favorite people to work with, or they don't get things done on that timeline and they annoy you and all of that. But for the most part, rely on your team and trust your team and they'll trust you back and you'll get a way better product that way. Right. Right. Yes. And, and, you know, I, I, I'd add, add to that, you know, trust your team, involve your team and, and work on your team. You know, like I, uh, teamwork is a, is a is a is a key thing and and being part of a team and cultivating um you know if you're involved in team selection or at all you know get the the team you you know assemble the team if if you have if if that's within your role you know or even you referred to your relationship with i think client services you referred to if that's part of your extended team that's a relationship you want to cultivate you know because if they're part of your extended team so so that's good um, one, one sort of last area I wanted to, to, to just explore with you. And again, we, we talked about this a little bit before we started was, uh, um, you're in a, you're, you're on the West coast. Um, and so you're, a, 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 a two hour, two or three hour time, two hour, is it? Two hour? I'm three, 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 three from here right now. It's from two me. in the winter because we, uh, we got rid of daylight savings time. So right. that makes it even more confusing. Right. So two to three hour time frame from from Eastern the standard time, and uh, you were we were talking about some of the advantages of that. That you know you might think, oh, well, that's that's sort of a, a disadvantage because you're working remotely, and 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 you know again in the in in the times we're in right now, very common to work remotely uh, on on your projects. But we were you were talking about one of the one of the advantages you had of of that two to three hour time difference uh, with your team. So I just wondered if you just relate that again, because it was, it was really interesting for projects. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So it's, it's nice. Um, uh, you know, we've been talking about asynchronous learning and asynchronous everything. Um, I think asynchronous work has its benefits. Um, you don't get the benefit of turning around and tapping someone on the shoulder and checking in on something, but It's great for me and it's great for my client services team because they get that two to three hour window before I log on in the morning. Um, I've set my hours so I work 11 to 7 Eastern, um, so 8 to 4 my time. And so they get that two hours in the morning to get their stuff together, check in, 
go through their inbox, read through everything and see what their priorities for the day are before I'm hounding them for, hey, you said I should work on this, where's this? Hey, what's that? What's the status of this? All of that. Um, so I don't bug them at the beginning of the day so they can get their day organized and hand it off to me when it's ready, which is great for me because I just walk into a nice plate of work in front of me that I can pick and choose and go for. Um, and then I also get two hours, two and a half hours at the end of the day that um, I'm not having people pinging me on Slack and saying, hey, what's the status of this? What's going on with that? Um, so I get some quiet time, heads down time that I know nobody's going to book a meeting. No one's going to bug me. It's great. Um, and then also for our clients, it means that if there's an emergency, we're not necessarily pulling people back from taking the kids to soccer practice or cooking dinner or enjoying the newest show on Netflix. We are, we have people that might have been about to log off but can stay on a little bit longer um, and we can really help cover a wider range um, and then selfishly it's nice for me because uh, if there's an emergency it's likely still going to be at a regular time of day for me um, and you know if it's 10 o'clock eastern and there's an emergency it's still only 7 p.m so i still get some of my evening right right um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's almost it, it's almost uh you know if you, uh it, it's almost a, you, if you you'd almost want to set it up this way, you know, if, if from a from a from a, a client service agency type uh you know type of, of scenario where you 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 have this extended day. I think it's a great example of of you know remote work um which is you know often often described as advantageous for for employees you know because you know people can live in different areas lower cost of housing or lifestyle and so on so it's so it's very good from that regard but I, it, it's also interesting because this is a you know great workflow advantage and advantage to clients like like you say if there is a you know if if um for 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 customers who are in the say the eastern time zone you know, say in Ontario, um, if they have a, you know, an issue, you're there later in the day, which is, which is useful and, and we'll be able to react probably faster than you may have if you were kind of pulled back into work or we're doing something else, you're, you're there in the office. So, so it's quite, quite interesting of sort of taking what could be sort of seen as a disadvantage and making it into an advantage. That's, that's really good. I like that. Yeah. And even like, not only am I physically, you know, at my desk ready to work, you don't have to drive back from soccer practice, but I'm also mentally still in my work headspace. Right. So I don't have to worry about switching gears and like rejigging the way I'm thinking. I can just jump into it um, instead of that, you know, maybe hour delay by the time someone is able to figure out um, some logistics of childcare or whatever is going on in their personal life and switch their work brain back on. Um, so it, it works out well. Um, and even, even when I was working out of the Guelph office, um, a lot of the, um, the developers would work like a 10 to six. So they still kind of had that, that as well. And they had that extra hour in the morning that, things to be organized and ready and waiting for them. Right, right. Sounds good. So anyways, uh, David, this has been a great conversation. I, I've, I've really enjoyed connecting uh, with you again and, and appreciate your insights about, you know, the and, and advice to to uh, to people thinking of the the going into the agency and agency world. It sounds like a it sounds like a, a really interesting environment. Uh, you know, uh, it sounds challenging, but but really interesting. So thanks for for sharing your insights on that. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a it's an exciting place to be. And uh, if you like juggling multiple things at one time, check out agencies. It means you get to work on a little bit more interesting stuff. But uh, you're a little bit more of a jack of all trades if that's what you're into. Yeah, I, that that's actually a really good point of of, of you know it is go into it if you like that environment if you, if you want to work on one thing at a time don't go there that that's <laughs> be true 
So, but anyways, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, good to see you, and and uh, we'll we'll talk to you again soon. I'm sure. Perfect. Thanks for having me. Take care.